Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your compassion. Thank you for your purpose. We're asking, Lord, that today, this session, you open your heart, open the scriptures to everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, your word will do good in every life. Transform every life. Make everyone triumphant in the Lord in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word and your promise in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said another. Triumphant, amen. Victorious, amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Again, we're coming to Daniel. And we're coming to Daniel chapter 4. I'm looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I also do you to look at that last part of the sentence. He is able, able to do all things positive, negative. Able to do all things prophetic, practical. Able to do all things in that generation and in this generation. Able to do all things according to his will, according to his mind, according to his purpose, according to his prediction, his promise, and prophecy. This morning, this session in Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at the message, Able, Able, God is Able. Every time, everywhere, for everyone, according to his plan, according to his purpose, Able, Able, God is Able. I'm sure you understand and you know where we're coming from? Chapter 1 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 2 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 3 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. As we look at Nebuchadnezzar at the end of chapter 3, it says, I praise the God of heaven because the people that trust in him who because of that are trustworthy. And the, the people that have faith in him, or oh, because of that, are faithful. And the people that lean on him, and the people that depend on him, therefore, they are dependable. He has protected them. He has preserved them. They went through the fire, but the fire was not able to touch them or to do anything negative in their lives. That same Nebuchadnezzar, religious, that same Nebuchadnezzar, that at the moment his testimony appeared convincing. It appeared this must be a converted man. But you know, conversion goes beyond the watch of the mouth. Conversion goes beyond the testimony temporal, temporary of a moment. Conversion will take place in the heart. It will make a change. It will make a transformation. It's more than joining a church. It's more than changing 
outward expression. It's more than wearing a garment. It's more than a temporary confession about the Lord God Almighty. Conversion is a transformation of the heart, a change of life, a change of disposition, a change in every area, and the heart now being humble before the Lord will not go into pride anymore. But Nebuchadnezzar shows us the average religious man, shows us the average churchgoer, and shows us the average member of any denomination, even though they confess, even though they read the Bible, even though they even see miracles happening in other lives, it takes internalizing the word, internalizing the promise, internalizing the power of a creator God in their lives and making a definite change. That's why as we come to chapter 4 of Daniel, God had to do something that humiliated the man, turned the man from being a man to what he really is to a beast. And when reality came to him, and he saw the power of God that turned everything around, he now had a real transformation. A real conversion and a real confession that now said, God, the God of heaven, the most high God, that that God is able. And he now gives a testimony, not what he saw in Daniel, a testimony, not what he saw on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, a testimony of what had happened unto him. In Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 1, Daniel chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell on in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. In verse 3, he says, How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation verse 34 in verse 34 it says and at the end of the days the days of discipline for Nebuchadnezzar the day of heaven having impact and real irresistible pressure on the man on earth. It said, and all the, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. He had lost his understanding. He had lost his mind. He had lost what made him a man, but now he said, at the end of the time of the discipline, my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35, it says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth 
when they make themselves opposed to the Almighty. Now, this does not talk about Daniel. Daniel, a beloved man before the Almighty God. This does not talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Abesh, and Abednego, and um, all those three people, it, it, they were so important in sight of the Lord. The Lord God of heaven sent Christ unto them. And it's not talking of people like Peter, like John, like James. It's not talking about people like Paul, because God God appointed him to be an apostle that will carry his message to the rest of the world, but the ordinary people and the normal people and the monarchs and the kings and, and the people on earth, all these inhabitants of the earth that regard God as nothing. God also regards them as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth that make God of nothing. God also makes them of nothing. And Nebuchadnezzar himself an emperor. Nebuchadnezzar himself a king all over the powers all over the universe at that time. Those who regard me, those who honor me, I will regard and honor. And those who despise me and make little of me, I make little or nothing of them. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of man. Or say unto him, What doest thou? Verse 36, in verse 36, at the same time, my reason, my reasoning, my faculties returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now he concludes in verse 37. It says in verse 37, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, for real, I, Nebuchadnezzar, with conviction, I, Nebuchadnezzar, with a change of life, a transformation of heart, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol, exalt and honor the king, capital king, the king of heaven, who has authority over all the kings and the lords and the emperors on earth and all whose words are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride at that time and at this time those that walk in pride like pharaoh like nebuchadnezzar like herod and those that walk in pride among all men in every generation those that walk in pride he is able to abase. That's why we're looking at this chapter now. Able, able, the God who is able. We divide the passage to three parts. Number one is talking about the testimony of a proud king after humiliation. When he said, who is that God? And he carried on in a proud disposition. The God of heaven showed him who is in charge. Who brought Judah to Babylon. Who defeated Jehoiakim. Who brought Nebuchadnezzar to the point where he was that he ruled in the generation of men. Now... Nebuchadnezzar realized and he gave testimony, the testimony of a proud king after humiliation. Number two, the tree. 
with a peculiar kind of hardness. The tree, and actually, it's talking of Nebuchadnezzar as the tree. Remember what Jesus said, if they have done this to a green tree, referring to himself, man is like a tree planted by God, grows around with all the circumstances around him, and eventually the tree might be cut down. And so man is shown, represented, symbolized by a tree in the dream that God gave Nebuchadnezzar the tree with a peculiar kind of hardness. The kind of hardness Nebuchadnezzar had was peculiar. And he also had a peculiar treatment because of his peculiar hardness. Number three now is the triumph of the powerful king of heaven. The triumph. God will triumph in every case. In your case. In my case. In your family. In the church. Among the Jews. On Israel. Nebuchadnezzar may think, I got them. I captured them. I put them in captivity. But the king of heaven has the final say. And even Nebuchadnezzar will confess that the king of heaven has the final say. Any Nebuchadnezzar may brag, me boast, any Nebuchadnezzar, any man, any woman, anyone hearing me now, anyone here or there, anywhere, may brag and boast and may say, I am this, I am that, I will do this, I will do that. My friend, my neighbor, God, the King of Heaven, has the final say, the triumph of the powerful king of heaven. Let's look at number one here. Number one here, we're looking at the testimony of a proud king after his humiliation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4 verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all the people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. We divide this section to three parts. Number one, number one, the supernatural signs and wonders of God on high. Number two, the, spectac the spectacular signs and works of the God of heaven. And then number three, the steadfast sayings and words of God for all humans, for everyone. Look at number one there. Number one is the supernatural signs and wonders of God on high. The God on high. The God who is able and the God who does signs and wonders. Every time, everywhere. Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 again, it says, And Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. We're looking at uh, verse 2 now. In verse 2, it says, I thought it good to show. Oh, great. My wireless bill just went up. Should have gone with U.S. Cellular. They aren't raising prices on any of their plans. Seriously? Yeah, my price won't increase. Well, that is refreshing. I feel like everywhere you turn these days, prices are going up. Supply chain got us too. Don't get me started on the overhead cost. At U.S. Cellular, every plan for everyone is price protected. You know, I respect a female entrepreneur. U.S. Cellular, where every plan is price protected. Hi, Aaron. Can you pick up 10 $500 gift cards for the office bonuses and email back the PIN numbers?
the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. He was going to give testimony as to what God has done. And he says what God did and what God is doing and what God will yet do. There are nothing short of signs and wonders. Look at that same Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 22. In Daniel chapter 6, looking at verse 22, it says God has said, his angel and he has shot the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before the before him innocency was found in me and also before the o king have i done no look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says in this verse then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God, signs and wonders, into the lion's den, a night in the lion's den, and coming out unhurt, and coming out the way he went in with faith as the faithful, he came out with the freshness of energy and confidence, faithfulness unto the Lord, signs and wonders. Whether it's in chapter 2, or in chapter 3, or chapter 4, or chapter 6, signs and wonders done by the Lord. Until today, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, it tells us how shall we escape if we neglect to uh, so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders. God bearing them, them who Enoch, Noah, bearing them witness, them who Abraham, them who Joseph, bearing them witness, them who, them, the children of Israel, the more they persecuted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Them who at the wench, to the river, the Red Sea, nothing, what had never happened, the power of God parted the Red Sea and they went over, bearing them witness, them who, the children of Israel, by the rock, at the waters gushed out of the rock, them who, the children of Israel, by river Jordan, that at the feet of the priest, head on Jordan, Jordan divided them who Joshua, as he told the sun, sun stand there, and the moon stand there, and the sun so still, and will not move, and will not, the rotation of the earth around the sun will not take place for almost a day. Them who, them, the children of Israel, as Caleb came to boast and the brag, and in one day God sent an angel and destroyed the army of 185,000 militant soldiers. God is still walking signs and wonders. And when Christ came, walking on the water, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, and casting those evil spirits out, and even raising the dead, Lazarus, that had died, and for four days, now God, Christ raised him up, God bearing them witness. Both were signs and wonders, and diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will that God is still alive today. There's something uncommon happening here in the Commonwealth. 
We're making world-class research more accessible to more students in more ways for less. Solving the world's challenges demands diverse thinking, so we're bringing new minds to the table and equipping them with high-quality research and innovative thinking, so they're ready to answer whatever questions tomorrow might bring. Old Dominion University. With DirecTV, I can get live TV and on-demand together. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Whoops. I just want to talk. Go, 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 go. Get your TV together. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV to save up to $120. He'll bear your witness. What signs, what wonders, what power, what miracle, with manifestation you never saw in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. He bears us witness. He says and he shows, I'm still God and I'm still alive. And wherever you are and whatever your condition, he bears witness both for signs and wonders. Look at number two here. Number two here is the spectacular signs and works of the God of heaven. It tells us in Daniel chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 3. It says in verse 3, now how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders, his works, his kingdom, it's an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Aren't you glad that God didn't only work in the generation of Abraham? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God didn't work only in the generation of Moses or Joshua? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God is not limited to the generation of Elijah and Elisha? That even now, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Even now, its dominion is from generation to generation. In this, our generation, in your lifetime, in my lifetime, he will do whatever he has ever done in any other generation. Mighty works, great works, spectacular works, signs and works of the Lord. In Luke chapter 19, Luke Chapter 19, reading from verse 37, it tells us in verse 37, and when he was calm, calm, nice, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works, all the mighty works, all the mighty works that they had seen. And the Lord Jesus Christ assured us that those mighty works will not stop after his death, will not stop at his burial, will not stop at his resurrection and advent to heaven. 